Hey, so I'm uh, just sitting at my desk watching uh, YouTube videos about people trying to qualify for the uh, Boston Marathon. Looking for some uh, inspiration. I am one week away from running the big Cottonwood Canyon uh, Marathon. And I'm hoping to qualify for the Boston Marathon. I'm hoping to get sub three hours and ten minutes. It's crazy. Uh, this is my 11th marathon. Um, and uh, will hopefully be my second time to qualify for the Boston Marathon. So I've put in a ton of work. Uh, I just did 10 easy miles today. Um, you know, the next week, of course, is just tapering, making sure I fuel correctly the couple days before the marathon. But I'm super excited. I think I'm in a really good position to get under three hours and 10 minutes. I don't even know why I picked up my camera. I just felt like I should... Uh, start talking into the camera and uh, sharing some of my thoughts. I'm in really good shape. I really need to uh, get a better angle, you know, but I mean, look at those, look at those legs. Um, you know, I've been working out really hard uh, and uh, I, I think I got a good shot. The Big Cottonwood Candy Marathon is a downhill marathon. Uh, I'm excited. It should be a fast course. I put in tons and tons of work over the last six months, uh, I ran a half marathon and got a one hour, 31 minutes and 20 something seconds, which really makes me feel like, hey, getting a 310, um, I've got a good shot. So, you know, maybe that's all I'll say for now uh, in this video, uh, at least facing me. Maybe I'll hop on uh, the computer and actually show you the race profile, give you a little bit of uh, inside my head as I try to shoot for a three hours, ten minutes. Thanks a lot. All right, so here it is, the uh, big Cottonwood Canyon. I've picked this course. Uh, I live in Washington State, so I'm going to be flying all the way down to Utah to run the big Cottonwood Canyon. I just thought I'd uh, show you kind of what I'm looking at in terms of the race profile, uh, which you can see here very fast downhill course and my strategy for actually running that race as I said the goal is to run under three hours and ten minutes and so uh, what I've done is of course I've taken a look at the this course a lot uh, and so if I uncheck the half marathon um, what you can see mile by mile here which is a great satellite picture um, and because I know the elevation profile um, you know, it looks like, oh, this is all downhill, you know, pretty much. But um, I've exported all the data. Uh, I got it in an Excel spreadsheet, and so I can walk through this course a little bit more and tell you um, that it's, you know, it's not all flat, of course. So generally speaking, uh, at the start, it's going to be nice and cool. It should be potentially under 40 degrees, which is great. I love nice and cool weather. It starts at 6 a.m., uh, sun doesn't rise until like 7.08 a.m. Um, so going to be running nice and cool weather before the sun even rises for almost an hour. Um, uh, a little longer than an hour, actually. So uh, downhill for the first three miles. And then you make this uh, turn uh, to the left at about mile three right here. And you go up towards uh, Brighton Resort. Uh, the ski resort there and uh, so as you make that turn that actually starts uphill so this little loop begins uphill until you come up to the top and as you come back down this loop then it it, it is a little bit more downhill uh, and then so it, so mile three is going to be a, a much slower mile than um, you know, the first three, so or mile four, I should say, since that's after the mile marker. So mile four is going to be a slower mile. Um, so I need to be ready for that. So I'm not going to panic. So uh, I can show you my uh, spreadsheet. But uh, basically, after mile four, you make this loop, you start coming back down. And once you meet back up with the main canyon again here, it uh, starts dropping. So mile, you know, five, six, there's very minor, uh, Climbs, I, w I wouldn't even call them climbs, right? Um, they're more just minor bumps in the road. Um, it, it's fast. So all the way to the halfway point, um, my goal is to be at about a six 
minute 55 average pace. So yes, I'm banking some time. My overall pace needs to be seven hours and 15 minutes, but because it's such a steep decline, uh, the effort, so I wanna keep an even effort for the whole marathon. And so the effort required to run downhill is significantly less than to run on a flat course. So my effort should remain the same. So even though I'm going much faster, my heart's gonna be working less, gravity is going to be pulling me down that hill. Uh, and then what's cool is that actually miles 13 to about 19 uh, are even faster. Um, it, it maybe doesn't show well on this map, uh, but it is even steeper. So let me um, show, show this. If you look at this, and, and I'll see if I can zoom up, but you know you can see we got this little bump at four. And then a couple little bumps here. And then about the halfway point is a little bit steeper than what we were doing um, all the way. So so actually, I, I'm hoping that I can keep that 655 average mile pace overall. Of course, you know, there's little, little bumps in the road there that could uh, slow things down. But then the real race begins always at around mile 20. Uh, and so... If I uncheck this, uh, it's actually at about 19-ish. So you've run through 18, you start mile 19, you turn right and you do this out and back that you can see. I hate out and backs, but that's the way this course is. Um, as you make this turn, uh, you do a little bit of an elevation gain, right? So you go 18, 19, turn around, hit 20, and then you start to actually go back downhill just a little bit as you come back this way. Uh, and so I've looked at the average pace of previous year runners. People definitely are slowing down a lot there, which is why I wanna run at about a 655 average because I know my average pace is going to slow down over this four to four and a half miles, this out and back. Um, the good thing is is that there are uh, aid stations um, along the way you hit uh, it's it's underneath there but essentially you hit there is one under this red cross sign uh, and so you hit three aid stations basically you hit one and then you hit J so two and then you turn around and you hit this one again so you hit three aid station there's gonna be lots of you know Gatorades goose water support and that will be needed so I I'm spending a lot of time on this because this is really where the race is going to be won and lost, uh, a big part of it, and then how you can pull out of that. So you then turn on to uh, Fort Union Boulevard, and the downhill does begin again um, at uh, um, not as steep a pace, uh, a steep a, a decline, but it is still um, significant. However, you know, quads are going to be thrashed. I'm going to be uh, hurting really bad is going to become a huge mental game to can I pick it up? So I'm hoping I make this turn and just push through the pain to get my pace back up. And I'm hoping after I hold that pace mentally for a minute or two, it'll start to feel a little easier as the downhill starts to hopefully push me. Um, I've been through a lot of marathons. I know, like I said, this is my 11th marathon, uh, but then it's kind of cruising. Unfortunately, it's through the city. It's not going to be as beautiful, but hopefully there's some crowds and mentally it'll just be time to get really, really tough. And then uh, hopefully I'm at the end at 26.2, under three hours and 10 minutes. So that's kind of the course. Um, I can show you my spreadsheet here uh, real quick. Let me actually get you the better spreadsheet that I wanted to show you. All right, so here's the spreadsheet that I wanted to show you. This just shows my my plan based on all the elevation changes that I just kind of went through. Um, I should actually change this one because it gets a little slower before that. So let's say mile 20, I run at a 7.25, right? I'm just throwing in some numbers, but it is based on elevation changes. So I want to keep roughly you know, a 6.55 average pace um, most of the miles. Mile four, um, I, I'm, it's going to be slower, so I'm predicting that, you know, I run a 745. You know, that puts me in at 131 and a half. 
um, just under a seven minute mile pace. And then I think I can pick it back up to a 655 average. Uh, and you can see uh, that. But then it starts to slow down where I make that turn, right? Onto the, you know, this making this turn. It's uh, my pace is going to slow. So 725, 740, 740, you know, is slowing down. Even though I, I, I put in slower times, I really think and hope I can pick this up to like a 7, you know, 15 pace. Uh, but even if I don't, with this plan, I should come in, you know, roughly a 308. So I'm sort of pacing myself for a 307, 308. Um, if things go well, it could be faster. But... I've run 11 marathons. I know at the end it gets really, really tough. I just hope it doesn't get slower than this, uh, honestly, is what I'm hoping. So so there you have, have it. There's um, my marathon plan with my marathon paces specifically for the big Cottonwood Canyon. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. What can I say? I'm in, uh, I think I've trained really, really well. Um, pretty much the best shape of my life. So there you have it. Wish me luck. Thanks a lot for watching.